What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at entry boxes for custom Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at entry boxes for custom Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address and I'll shoot that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. All right, in the last video, we talked about buttons for custom Kinter. In this video, I wanna talk about entry boxes, and that's this sort of round thing right here. And I've made it look round. Normally, it doesn't look round. We'll take a look at the default in just a second. And you can see, you could type, I've changed the color. If we click the button, it says hello, we can clear it. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this custom Kinter playlist. So check that out if you haven't so far. So we've got a file, I'm calling it ctk underscore entry dot pi. And we've got our basic custom Kinter starter code that we always have. And let's come down here and let's just create a quick label. I'm gonna call this my underscore label. And this is gonna be a custom tkinter dot ctk label. We want to put it in a root. We want the text for now to be nothing. And let's change the font also while we're at it to Helvetica and like, I don't know, 24, make it nice and big. So then let's minor score label dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of like 40, really push it down the screen. So now let's create an entry box. So I'm going to call this minor score entry. And this is going to be a custom tkinter dot ctk entry. And again, notice the C and the T are capitalized, the K is not, and then the E in entry is capitalized. Same thing here with the label, all right? And we wanna put this in root. Now, strictly speaking, this is all that we need. We could just get away with just that, but I'm gonna start out by giving this some placeholder text. And I'm gonna say, enter your name, all right? And we're gonna do a bunch of other things, so I'm gonna put these on separate lines. So let me just go ahead and, well, for now, why don't we just do it like that? Okay, now we also need to my underscore entry dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y like 20, push it down the screen a little bit. So, okay, so far so good. Now we need a button real quick. So let's go my underscore button. And this is gonna be a custom tkinter dot ctk button. And we wanna put it in root. Let's have the text say submit, something like that. And let's give this a command of submit. And we'll make this function in just a second. For now, let's my underscore button dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y like 10, push down the screen a little bit. So now let's come up here very quickly and let's just create that function. And for now, let's just pass. So let's go ahead and save this and take a look and see what this looks like. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run Python ctk underscore entry dot pi. And when we do, we get this little entry box here. You can see it looks pretty modern and cool looking. It's sort of outlined in gray. Inside of it's a darker gray. When we type, the text is sort of white looking. Uh, let's see, let me close this and run it again. Notice the placeholder text says enter your name. The color of that's kind of light gray, well, not quite white, but light gray. When we click on it, it disappears. So very cool. And uh, that's kind of all there is to it. Now, if this is all you want, that's fine, you're done. But we have all kinds of different options we could play around with for this thing. So let's come up here. And first, how do we find out like what's in it? Like if we type something in there, how do we get whatever that is and do something with it? So in our submit function, let's take our label, let's go my underscore label and let's dot configure this thing. Now remember, you can't dot config this, it has to be dot configure. That's sort of a, a weird thing about custom Kinter. And then let's set the text equal to whatever is in this my entry label. So to grab whatever's in there, we just call my entry dot get, right? And since we're asking for a name, let's create an F string here. And let's say hello, and then we'll put these in brackets. So this will say hello, and then whatever you typed in there. So let's just go ahead and save this and run it real quick, just to make sure that worked. So here I can type in John. When I click submit, it says hello, John. Okay, so that's cool. Now, how do we configure this entry box? How do we change it around? How, what can we do with it and how? Well, first, let's start out with the height and width. So we can change the height and width of it pretty easily. So let's set this equal to 50 and let's set the width to like, I don't know what, 200, something like that. Save this and run it. And now suddenly the box is much wider and taller. 
still works the same. If we go ahead and do this and click the button, it still says, hello, John. So, okay, that's cool. Uh, this text inside of here, now that the entry box is bigger, we might want this text to be bigger too. How do we change that? Well, super simple there. We can change the font and we do this just the same way we did with a label. We can set this to whatever we want. I'm going to say Helvetica and like 18, something like that. Save this and run it. Now you notice already the placeholder text is bigger and when we type that text is bigger too. So that's cool. Now you'll notice the shape of this thing. It's kind of square, but the edges are a little bit rounded. We can change that corner radius as well just like we did with the buttons in the last video. If you didn't check, if you didn't see that video, check it out. We can change that just by calling the corner underscore radius and setting that to some number. The bigger the number, the more the curvature, I guess you would say. All right, so go ahead and save this, run this guy, and now boom, we have a definitely more rounded entry box. Very cool. So what about color? So right now the text color is very light gray, almost silver. What if we wanna change that? Super easy. We can just change the text underscore color. So I might want to turn this to green. You can also use your hex color codes. So something like that, whatever. I'm just going to use the word green. You can also do it like that. Just like all color things with Kinter, you can use the color name or the hex color code. Go ahead and save this. You'll notice the placeholder text color is the same, but if we type now it's green, we can also change the placeholder text color. And you'll never guess what the attribute name for that is. It's placeholder underscore text underscore color. And here, maybe we want to set this to blue. I don't know. Go ahead and save this. Let me add a comma there just for good measure. And whoa, now the placeholder text is bright blue. Don't like that one bit. <laughs> Let's go ahead and change that to like, I don't know, dark blue. Save this and run it. I'm just being picky now. That's still not great. I would probably use a color hex color code to get the same color as this button, but whatever, you get the idea. Super simple. Now, what about the color of the entry box itself? You can see it's sort of light gray on the border and dark gray in the middle. How do we change that? Well, super easy. Also, we can change the F ground underscore color. F ground stands for foreground. And this is going to be a tuple. Let me make a little comment here. Outer, inner. And you separate these with a comma. The first one will be the outer color, right? So uh, I don't know, we could say blue or something, right? And then the inner color, I don't know, let's go light blue. I'm bad with colors, but you know, this will at least show it. If we save this and run it, you could just sort of make out the outer border of this thing is dark blue or blue, I guess. And the inside is obviously light blue. So, all right. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Now we are submitting this thing and it's doing something up here, but what if, how do we clear the screen for an entry box? Well, let's create another button real quick while I'm thinking about it. And let's call this the clear underscore button. And this is going to be a custom kinter.ctk button. We want to put it in root. I want the text to say clear. And let's give this a command of clear. And we'll create this function in just a second. For now, let's clear underscore button dot pack this guy. Give it a pad Y like 10. Push down the screen a little bit. And we can come up here and define our clear function. And in order to clear the entry box, we just call my underscore entry dot delete. And inside of here, we pass a parameter from zero to end. So zero is the first position of the text. So this will take everything from the very first letter in the entry box all the way to the end and delete it. So if we save this, head back over here, let's try this guy again, clear the screen, run this again. Here, if we type something in here, click submit, and we click clear, boom, the entry box disappears. It, it deletes itself. Very cool. And uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. So what else can we do with this entry box? Well, we've covered pretty much everything. We can also change the state. You could change the state in all widgets, basically. And you probably already know how to do that. Let's come up here and give a comma here. And let's just set the state equal to disabled. Save this, run it. Now the entry box isn't going to work at all. You can see there isn't even any placeholder text. I'm clicking on it. I'm typing. Nothing has happened. It's completely disabled. Uh, we can't submit or clear. It just says hello. And that's, you know, not great. You could change this back to normal or just leave it off because the default is normal. Uh, but if you put it as normal, you could change it like that. We could also do that same thing with a button. Let's say on the submit button here. 
Let's go my underscore entry dot configure state equals disabled. And if we copy this and also on the clear button, we set this back to normal. If we save this and run it, whenever we type something, so if I type in John here, that green text is horrible. I'll click submit, it says, hello, John. Now I'm clicking on this and it's completely disabled. I can't do anything here. I can't type, but if I then click clear, it clears it and it sets it back to normal. So now I can type again. You can see the cursor is blinking. When I hit submit, the cursor stops blinking because this whole thing has been disabled and then I can clear it again and, and use it again. So uh, that's one way to do that. That's probably how you would normally do it using buttons of some sort or programmatically or whatever, but pretty simple, pretty cool. And that's all there is to it. So that's the entry box for custom Kinter. Pretty simple, lots of different things you could do with it. Pretty easy to use and uh, very handy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. Get all my courses, all my future tkinter courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com, and I'll see you in the next video.